Joining us, uh, as he does every Monday morning, Matt Mikoviak, GOP political strategist and co-founder of MustRedTexas.com. Matt, good morning. Hey, Chad. Good morning. Uh, thanks for coming on with us today. Uh, let's take a look first at uh, the 2016 field, and I, I think it came out yesterday that uh, Jeb Bush had announced that he had raised more money than ever uh, for a Republican candidate in the first 100 days of I don't know what you call this, the non-campaign campaign era uh, that he's in right now, but uh, wh- what does this mean overall for the, the politics of 2016? Yeah, I mean, look, it's it's the expectation, so in a way it doesn't change things that much. Um, you know, they've been very coy about how much they raised. There was a Washington Post story that, that uh, cited two senior Republican officials who said that Jeb will have raised $100 million for his super PAC by the end of May. Um, you know, that would be a monster amount of money. Um, there's just no question about it, and it, I think it um, it will scare others in the field. It will freeze some other donors. Um, it will bring probably some money off the fence to Jeb uh, on the belief that his financial advantage is, is just too overwhelming. But, you know, look, I think everyone in the field – from the very beginning, has believed that Jeb would have the most money. Uh, the question is going to be, do the primary voters in those early states uh, want to see him as our nominee? And we haven't really seen very much movement towards him uh, in the first few months of the year. We have seen him perform reasonably well in front of conservative audiences when he's been at large gatherings like CPAC. But he's not done a ton of campaigning. He's done a lot of fundraising. Yeah. So... I, you know, I don't know that it changes anything. Uh, probably makes it a little harder to raise money for a lot of the candidates uh, when Jeff puts a huge number out there. But um, you know, still remains to be seen if he's going to be able to, to win votes in the early primary states from conservative um, Republican primary voters. Yeah, I, I just I, I look at the news that he's he's raised supposedly all this money, and we don't know how much exactly, but that he's raised all this money yet he keeps slipping in. Almost every single poll that you look at, apparently there's a new poll out of Virginia that he's uh, leading there in Virginia. But in, in all of these other polls that you've seen from Fox, CNN, he keeps slipping and he's in the, in, in the single digits. When you, and you look at him compared to a, a Rubio, a Scott Walker, even you know at times Ted Cruz or Rand Paul or both have uh, led Jeb Bush. It just there there seems to be something that's just not connecting with the voters out there, and I. It's hard to believe that just money alone is going to to help Bush, you know, move past a, a Walker or a Rubio. Yeah, I mean, look, the money will go a long way. And there's no question. Uh, particularly, you know, you know, if you consider the fact that that you know, eighty percent of the New Hampshire media market is Boston. That's a fairly expensive media market. You yeah. consider Nevada, which is likely to move from a caucus to a primary. You know, includes Vegas, and Vegas is an expensive media market. But then when you get to March first, when you have Texas and six or eight southern states, you're going to want to be able to be on television in all those places at the same time, and uh, those resources will allow you to do that. Now, what we've seen is we've seen uh, different candidates move move ahead in, in the polling at different times. Walker got an early bump. We've now seen Cruz, Paul, and Rubio each get a bump when they announce. This field is very uh, unsettled. There's, you know, uh, there's a word that maybe the governor of Ohio and the governor of Michigan are going to enter now. Um, and the, the polling itself is, I think, very suspect right now. It's very much, very heavy on, on name identification, and, of course, that's changing as people announce and get lots of our media. Visiting with Matt McCoviak, GOP political strategist, co-founder of MustreadTexas.com. Uh, Matt, it seems like every week we're bringing up Hillary Clinton and the awful uh, rollout of her campaign. Is there any chance that Democrats throw her overboard uh, when – you know, it's just bad news after bad news every single day regarding the Clinton Foundation, uh, emails, Benghazi. I mean, you just add all of this up, and it's just it's hard to believe that she is the inevitable candidate for the Democrats. It is hard to believe, and, and this is, you know, a big problem for them. They put all their eggs in the Hillary basket, and, uh, you know, it's, every week it seems to get worse. Um, I think this Clinton Cash book does create some significant problems for her. Um, yeah, they didn't, they didn't, they, they chose not to put anyone out on the Sunday shows to defend her, even though the author was on two of those shows. Uh, you've now had major stories in the Washington Post, New York Times, on ABC News, uh, and then that, that hour-long special on Fox News over the weekend that all 
uh, detailed some of the reporting in the book. So that's giving the author a lot of credibility that these sort of, um, you know, mainstream media or legacy organizations are are taking a lot of his reporting and adding to it and then reporting it as well. Um, and then, you know, you have the stunning admission that the Clinton Foundation admitted that they haven't disclosed some donations. Uh, inadvertently, you know, they're going to go go back and see what they've missed and, and amend all of their filings. And I think that, that to me, kind of undercuts any criticism of the author, that he was able to, just as an author, not with subpoena power, not with access to government documents, you know, part of what he what he did is he went back and looked through Canadian tax records mm-hmm. to find uh, donations that were, were were kind of used used past through entities to go to Canada and then to the Kim Clinton Foundation. So, uh, yeah, look, I, you know, look, Hillary's going to try to kind of slow walk this thing and, and stay under the radar and do some small events for the next few weeks, but she's going to have to answer these questions. Um, you know, where's the email server? What emails did you delete? Did those emails have anything to do with the Clinton Foundation? I think the likelihood of, of, of some type of invest, you know, government investigation in all this is fairly likely. If you saw Newt Gingrich on ABC News on Sunday morning, he was very, very strong about this and believes that a grand jury would absolutely indict her if they were presented the evidence that we have right now. Yeah, it's something that uh, I think is going to keep growing. It should keep growing. We'll see if the media allows it to grow. I, I just, you know, if this was Jeb Bush and, and the Bush Foundation uh, that was out there, I, I think he'd already be <laughs> thrown out of this entire race, that, that the media would just, you know, as much pounding as they have done on Hillary Clinton's campaign, uh, they would have totally just gotten rid of uh, Jeb Bush already uh, if if this would have come out about him and, uh, who knows? The author is apparently going to aim at Jeb Bush next, so I guess we'll see right. if anything comes out there. Yeah, and that's what that's what's interesting is he's now four months into uh, investigating how Jeb Bush has earned his later, earned his income over the years, and uh, you know is doing a lot of research in that regard. And I'm sure that'll be very interesting when that comes out in the next six months or so, whenever that book's ready. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Matt, before we let you go uh, and, and, and plug the website, uh, we've only got, uh, you know, 30-something days left in the legislative session. What are what are some of the key pieces of legislation or key bills out there that you think are, are really coming down to not enough time left in order to do anything about? Well, yeah, I mean, if, if you want to talk about what's, what, what, what may run out of time, I mean, there's, there's bills that are sort of on the periphery that are, were not necessarily emergency items listed by the governor, but still have either passed one house or have some momentum, but, but it's not clear what's going to happen. And campus carry and open carry are in that category, uh, although I think the open carry will probably pass. School choice, I think, is in that category. Uh, you know, the in-state tuition, removal in-state tuition for illegal immigrants, I think, is in that category. Um, you know, there's other bills. There's statewide preemption bills for the oil and gas uh, sector on the fracking bans. I think that probably will pass. Um, you know, there, there's a number of bills that are out there that are you know kind of hanging around right now. And, and, and look, the House and Senate haven't been playing well together until probably late this week. You just saw both both bodies or both leaders agree to refer a number of bills to committees, which they've been refusing to do. So. Things, things got pretty bad midweek last week. I think they're going to start moving now because there's not that much time left. But at some point, not everything gets through because there's just not enough time. Yeah, exactly. Matt, tell folks what they can read on MustreadTexas.com today. Yeah, all the top news from around the state, uh, Texas Legislative Session, 2016 news, all put into one place. A lot of news about Tim Cruz and Rick Perry, all at uh, MustreadTexas.com. All right, Matt, as always, appreciate your time. We'll visit with you again next week. Sounds good. Have a great week. Take care. You too. That's Matt McCoviak. Follow him on Twitter at Matt McCoviak.